Once upon a time there was a jolly happy chef using nothing more than a bowl and a wooden spoon. This brilliant chef cooked up all manner of concupiscent foods. Just look at him go. But you see, there was something just a little bit weird about this guy. You see, he hated food. A chef who hates food? That's insane! Well, yes, Perry, that was basically the point. You see, here on December 12th, 2013, the folks on the political right in the USA have gotten so extreme and so nutty that they openly run for political office on an anti-government theme. Now, Perry wants you, the thoughtful citizens of Austin, Texas, and perspicacious viewers on the web to consider the insanity of voting for someone who thinks government is evil, which is basically what the right do. But you see, this show is called The Chef Who Hated Food. It's Perry's way of explaining why it is improper, incorrect, and just plain dumb to vote for anyone who declares that government is bad. You see, as a child could tell you, they have every incentive to screw things up and then say, Well, I told you government is bad! Hey, hi, thank you for watching. I love you. But I, Perry Logan, do hereby call upon the political right in America to get the hell out of politics. Right out of politics now, yes? <laughs> this calls for a brush solo. You know how emotional I am. Now look, now, I don't think the political right in the USA, and you know, I love them all. You know how much, you know how full of love I am. I, I think it kind of scares some of you. Well, <laughs> I, I think, I think it's a conflict of interest for anyone on the right to be involved in politics in any way. Perry? Yes, Perry! Yes, Perry! Yes, Perry! Yes, Perry! Now, look, here's my thinking. Let me lay bare my thinking to you. The uh, righties in the U.S. Oh, come on, a creepy tribe of mostly white males. <gasps> okay, creepy in ways. You know, it's like you just don't want to be alone on an elevator with John Boehner, you know what I mean? I beg your pardon, Perry. Now you stop picking on us. I said shut up, John! But I guess we are kind of creepy, aren't we? Now back to Perry. Did he kind of pulsate? Did, did he seem to be pulsating to you? Did, I don't think Republicans actually pulsate like that. But... <laughs> Never mind about who's creepy or what, you know, I mean, they think we're creepy too, you know, we know this. The <laughs> right in America today has, hmm, has uh, become very extreme. First of all, they have, they have slid rightward. Science tells us, yeah, science, actual st formulas and stuff. Ew! Formulas, look! Well, they look like formulas. Science tells us that the uh, political right continually moves the goalposts, shall we say. The goalposts of the political game in the USA have, I'm sure of it, I've been observing it, the goalposts have been moving to the right. You know what I mean. The norm has become increasingly right. And so, for example, we have the most, oh, I think Obama is virtually the most uh, right-wing president ever. Okay, most right-wing Democrat ever. 
in almost any real respect why his, his foreign policy, and I'm not joking, his foreign policy has won the open praise of neocons. Okay? Now, yes. You see, if neocons praise your foreign policy, you are falling into the sun. Ah! One moment, please. The Perry Logan Show has fallen into the sun. Show. Hot, hot. Okay, look. The right in America today, as I say, they've they've gone very, very rightward. It has been uh, it has been observed by others, not not original to me. It has been observed by many that uh, if Ronald Reagan were back and active in politics, he would be in serious trouble. Unless he changed his tone, he would be in serious trouble for being just too effing right, right? Whatever you say, Perry. Hi, this is the ghost of Ronald Reagan being tormented forever in the fifth circle of hell for the death squad thing. The death squad thing. The death squad thing? The death squad thing. Apropos, I'm the president who first started this whole anti-government tomfoolery. It was I, Ronald Reagan, who first said government is the problem, not the solution. And since my presidency, by an amazing coincidence, the quality of life has gone down for virtually all Americans. And I mean straight down. And I mean down into the vortex of hell. And down your toilet. Down into the caverns of despair. And down into your anus. And once again, the Perry Logan Show violates your personal space. And we find ourselves just scooting down your anus. Go, no, Perry. And keep in mind, this is all satire. I plead satire, Your Honor. And while he's scooting down your anus, so to speak, Perry thinks feverishly to himself, Don't you see? The political right in America has slid so far rightward, Ronald Reagan would be thought a lefty if he were alive today. The right have taken Reagan's crackpot anti-government ideas and run with them. And now, most folks on the right openly condemn government as inherently bad. Yes, uh, uh, most righties, Republicans and conservatives in the U.S., also libertarians, same damn thing, Okay, for, for our purposes, libertarians are kind of in the same bag there, even though, of course, they're not exactly the same. But let's look at it this way. The righties uh, are openly anti-government, many of them, most of them, even the politicians. And so we have this bizarre thing that's been going on since Reagan, I think, since it's been kind of going on, where uh, conservatives, Republicans mostly, uh, run for office like on an anti-government ticket. Uh, our own Rick Perry. Yay! Our own beloved Rick Perry here in Texas. Uh, <laughs> uh, Rick, I remember uh, listening to a speech of his when he was uh, vying for uh, the Republican nomination for the last election. For so there's a little time there, Rick Perry was a candidate, you know, he was in the lead for a little bit there. And I remember him giving a speech about how if he were president, he would be like, you wouldn't know he was there. And this was, this was I'm not really uh, mocking the speech at this point. It really was a, an anti-government speech. He was saying, I want to be president, and if I am, I'll get out of your way. You know, it was a familiar kind of Rick Perry theme and conservative theme. Government out of the way, you know, just anti-government. Less is better. You know, we, we know this because, of course, the right will, will not shut up about it. <laughs> For 30 years, the right cannot shut up about what a big threat government is. Like I say, they took that Reagan thing and kind of just like w went off their rocker. <laughs> okay. Well, you see, uh, this whole thing about anti-government uh, strikes me that, well, that makes being in government a conflict of interest for the righties. A conflict of interest for righties? Yes, Ronald. 
Look, if someone says they're against government, if someone says, I believe in limited government, well, yeah. hey, look at it this way. Once you have limited corporations, we'll talk about limited government. Yes? Yeah. I think a Perry Logan audience can appreciate the profundity of this point. Ladies and gentlemen, the Perry Logan Dancers! And now, back from the dead, Ronald Reagan! Hello everybody, this is Ronald Reagan, back from the dead. Well now, there you go again. I, Ronald Reagan, would like to take the right-wingers of today to task for getting carried away with that whole anti-government thing. Guys, I thought we were doing a movie. Guys, I'm a B-movie actor. I didn't know you'd take it seriously and become like Perry Logan's chef who hates food. I was wrong about the government, too. As any fool can see, ever since we started regarding government as the problem, the quality of life for most Americans has been going straight down the metaphorical toilet. No! And as Ronald Reagan disappears down the toilet, we have to admit, ever since we started regarding government as the problem, things have been going down the toilet. So if it weren't for Ronald Reagan, we wouldn't be in the toilet now. Oh, come on, don't pin that on me. It's bad enough I created homelessness. It's bad enough I turned the United States from a creditor to a debtor nation. It's bad enough that my administration, the Ronald Reagan administration, was easily the most corrupt administration in U.S. history. Here's the purple sphere to explain. This is the purple sphere, yeah, 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 yeah. This is the purple sphere, yeah, 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 yeah. Bow down, bow down, bow down the purple sphere, bow down. My friends, <clears throat> my friends, as a sphere, you know, sphere to sphere, I can tell you that the Ronald Reagan administration, among its other accomplishments, was easily the most corrupt administration of the 20th century. That's right! As the face of fear, I assure you, as measured by a fairly objective measure, the total number of convictions and forced resignations within any administration, the Ronald Reagan administration scored far above all other administrations combined. My friends, they were terribly, terribly corrupt. Oh, they were terribly corrupt. You can get... Hi. This is a sidebar. Okay. Don't forget, voting for a Republican. Voting for a Republican is like hiring a chef who hates food. One of the big points of this show. And uh, perhaps because the president who first thought that thing up about how government is the problem was very, very corrupt by a fairly objective measure. This objective measure, if my lips don't give up, this objective measure would be the total number of convictions and forced resignations of that administration. Please write that down. Write it down! Get a tattoo right here that says the total number of convictions and forced resignations of any administration is a good measure of the corruption of that administration. Okay? And by that measure, as I say, fairly objective. That would be just how corrupt they are. It's a measure of corruption. And by that measure, <laughs> Reagan was by far by far can you say far yes i thought you could it's pretty easy to say he was by far the most corrupt administration his was by far just oh no and this is like the 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 right's favorite guy you see the guy who first thought up this uh weird idea that government was the problem okay and uh, we shouldn't be surprised if someone who says government is rotten goes into government, we're going to get some rotten government. When they asked me to play the jolly, happy chef, I said, well, what's the point? And they, after rolling their eyes, said, well, don't you get it, Perry? Uh, 
voting for someone like a Republican today, voting for someone who says government is evil, the government should be limited, you know. I'm sorry. We start limiting government when we've got those corporations limited, okay? <laughs> You're not gonna fool me with that one. Okay, uh, <laughs> it is my feeling that anyone who believes that government is evil has a conflict of interest in going into government. Okay? How's that? We, I'm, I'm trying to get down to the real nitty gritty of this show. Yeah. December 12th, 2013. Uh, Merry Incipient Christmas. Happy Incipient Holidays or whatever. <laughs> it's a conflict of interest for someone who thinks government can't do anything. Come on, this is like rhetoric. This is like the conservative rhetoric of our day, is it not? Heard everywhere. Uh, you know, if, you, if the media were liberal, you wouldn't be hearing this conservative crap so much. So sorry. Hey, it's a conflict of interest because all you have to do is think about it. Hello? Oh, you love that silly stuff. But look, real point here. Uh, if you think government is evil, and then you run for office? That's a conflict of bloody interest. I mean, all you have to do is think about it. Uh, someone who thinks government can't do anything, okay? Government needs to be limited. You do trouble with it. And all that pukey tribe, baby, anti government crap. Bob, <laughs> Bob, I got excited and killed my audience. Ah, uh, replacement audience, please. I love you. I promise not to kill you. Hey, I haven't killed an audience in a long time. All right, but uh, it's a conflict of interest. If you think government is evil and you get into government, you have every motive to do a rotten job. You have every motive to screw things up deliberately. Tell me that's not what the right are doing. Tell me that's not what those Republican bastards have been doing. Well, yes, it is. Oh, come on, man. This is as transparent a scam hmm. as you could imagine. Someone says he hates government, you know, the whole rap very familiar to followers of politics in the U.S. how government can't do anything. Poor Obamacare is continuing, continuing its uh, problematic rollout. And uh, predictably, the writer is saying the anti-government folks are pretty excited and saying, hey, look, government can't do anything. And I say to them, that's why we never put a man on the moon, right? The government could never do anything like that. <laughs> Yes, well, when they asked me to play the Jolly Happy Chef, uh, I didn't get it at first, but, you know, I mean, voting for someone who thinks government is bad, you know, putting them into government in any way has the same conflict. It's, it's as crazy as hiring a chef who hates food. Jolly, happy, and cute though he may be. It doesn't make sense, does it? And of course it doesn't. It's crazy. So, here we have, it's a, it's a conflict of interest from the point of view of politics, because I'm sorry, anyone on the right, our good buddies, the libertarians, anyone on the right, they, they will tell you all day how terrible government is, right? Oh yeah. How crazy liberals are. 
We who try to use government, by the way, to liberate people, we use government to empower people. That's what the liberals are about, by the way. But you hear the rhetoric otherwise about how it's all a threat now. For these people to go into government is all wrong. Because they have every motive, do they not? To just, oh, F things up? Why, well, yes, they do. And of course, that's what they're doing. Hello? So, part of the show is to call the right out on their scam. Hey, we see through your scam, my friends. Uh, well, you know, you have every reason, don't you? You think government is bad, so if you get into government, you're damn well going to prove it, right? And then you're going to say, there you see, government is bad. <laughs> That's what you call logic ready style. You can leave if you want to, we're just jammed. So had it with righties mucking with government. Think about it. Would you uh, hire an employee who didn't, who thought your company was evil? Let's put it that way. <laughs> you're, 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 uh, you own a company. You're gonna hire someone who says, you know, he thinks corporations are evil. It'll be like hiring me. <laughs> Which some corporations actually did, but never mind. Yes, I've worked for, for corporations, I really have. Uh, and uh, in the private sector as well, okay, never mind. But, uh, I hereby call for the right in America to just get the hell out of government. You have a conflict of bloody interest. I don't know, I mean, did the right, give me a break, did the Republicans and the right and the Libertarians and these wonderful folks think uh, we weren't going to notice that well, they said they, they hated government, like Rick Perry was running for president a while back, trying to get the nomination. He really didn't say, you know, his whole point was he would be unnoticeable. <laughs> you know, he, it was an anti-government thing. So, now, my feeling is any, any person like that, even though we adore them all, gets into government, oh, oh, they have every reason to just screw things up. Well, sure, then they can say, see, government can't do anything. Oh, that's what passes for logic among our right-wing friends. And I say, pa! Right out of politics. Right out of politics. I'm sorry, but I'm just mad. Uh, you know, one of the things that happened in this show is I, I just uh, crystallized in my mind. That's why I'm wearing this weird thing. That and to keep my head from exploding. It just crystallized in my mind, this scam. Don't you see? It's a scam. God damn, it's a scam. And you can quote me on that. Hey. Oh yeah, well, it, you know, it really is like, hi okay, hiring a lawyer who, who doesn't believe in the legal system. Think about that. There's another good parallel. Voting for someone who says government doesn't work, he's going into government with the premise that it doesn't work. Well, you see, I'm pretty sure if these folks had been around in the 60s, we wouldn't have gotten to the moon no way. You see, we did put a man on the moon. And the government did do it, because you see, we thought it could. There you go! So, I don't know, don't you think any libertarian or Republican has to get the F out of government? We say that with love. Anyone on the right has to get the F out of government. And that includes things like lobbying and stuff. If you think government is no good, then you'll have every incentive to get in there and screw things up. 
tell me, that's not what the repubs have been doing low these past 30 years? <laughs> Gotta stop hitting myself. Are you gonna stand there with the audacity to say to me <laughs> that the right haven't been pulling the biggest old scam in the world? It's as simple as can be. Just screw things up, just start wrenching the works any way you can. Does this not describe the behavior of today's Republicans? Damn straight, Perry! Mm, Betsy! Yes. Satirical, vibrating version of Betsy Ross is right. You have every reason, if, if those are your beliefs, do you go in there and screw things up and then say, Oh, see? Government can't do anything. <laughs> okay. Can you say self-fulfilling prophecy? It's a little bit tricky. Let's try again. Self-fulfilling prophecy. Self-fulfilling prophecy. Hey, this feels good. Let's do it some more. Self-fulfilling prophecy. Self-fulfilling prophecy. Wow, wow, wow. Once upon a time, there was a jolly happy chef using nothing more than a bowl and a wooden spoon. This brilliant chef cooked up all manner of concupiscent foods. Just look at him go. But you see, there was something just a little bit weird about this guy, you see. He hated food. Hello and welcome to the chef who hated food.